Okay, so welcome again everyone to another science video lesson and in our lesson or in our video lesson today we will talk about earth science and what topic in earth science and what topic in earth science so this is typhoon all right so let's discover what is a typhoon all about let's go Alright, so this is a typhoon. If you are uh, familiar with this, uh, with this kind of uh, movement, okay, there you go. Okay, so so this is a typhoon. Alright, so in this uh, picture that we have right here, so a typhoon is a weather disturbance. Okay, and. It is similar to a to a, a hurricane and also it is similar to a cyclone all right so basically uh what what makes them similar they have the same anatomy they have the same uh structure they have the same um uh ways of how they are formed and they have the same uh the same area in which they are uh, they have the same um area in which they have they, they originated and they have also the same direction of travel Alright, so that is a typhoon, a cyclone, and a hurricane. So basically, the difference is the how meteorologists call them. Alright, so a typhoon is uh, somehow this term is used to call this uh, is it, it is used to call this weather disturbance when um, when it is in the Pacific region. Alright, so most of the meteorologists in the Pacific region, the Philippines, Japan, China, they call it typhoon. All right. So, and when we go to the Atlantic uh, region, all right, meteorologists there called it as hurricane. All right. So as hurricane. And when we go to the region of Indian Ocean, they called it as cyclone. All right. So regardless of how they call them, they are the same. All right. So today we were going to. We, on this video, we will going to discuss uh, how they are formed, all right? So where they are formed, what are the things needed in order to form one uh, typhoon? And lastly, what are the effects of this typhoon on the place that they pass through? All right, so let's not waste time. All right, so there are several, you know, there are several definitions uh, we can call them. So what what I will use here is a cyclone. All right, so basically it's the same thing. Uh, a typhoon and a cyclone is the same, has the same definition. All right, so as I said earlier, they just uh, called it into different terms in different places. All right, so a tropical cyclone or a typhoon or a hurricane that is an area of low pressure where uh, which develops on a tropical and subtropical waters all right so these are weather disturbances that are formed in uh based on the definition itself it is formed on the tropical and subtropical waters so where can we find these subtropical and tropical waters we can find them on the equator all right so equator so that is from 0 to 20 degrees north and 0 20 degrees uh down all right so or south all right so before it becomes a cyclone it starts first with the tropical depression so what do you mean by tropical depression this is a cyclone generally this is a cyclone but it is a weak version of a uh, typhoon or a cyclone or a hurricane which has a wind speed of 38 miles per hour or 62 kilometers per hour all right so this is the okay this is the characteristic or this is uh, the wind speed of this tropical depression all right any less than this one we called it a standard storm something like that all right so higher than this is called tropical storm and then uh, when you have higher than 62 or higher than 100 you can now have a tropical cyclone or even a super typhoon all right so okay so the, these are the usual definitions that are used in uh defining what is a cyclone a typhoon or a hurricane so regardless of which they have the same definition the one that you have right here is their definition all right so okay so a typhoon starts with a low pressure area all right so what does a low pressure area um contain all right a, a low a low pressure area contains uh, a lot of water vapor is happening on that area so it's in short the waters on that area are warm all right since they are warm they uh, tend to evaporate uh, 
uh, they, it has a greater level of evaporation on that area. So as we all know, when there is an evaporation, it tend to form clouds. All right, it tend to form clouds. Usually thunder, uh, thunderstorm clouds, and so on and then so forth. And these thunderstorm clouds create uh, precipitation or rain. Okay, uh, just take what we call it. Alright, so that is the low pressure area. No typhoon is formed under a high pressure area. Alright, so a low pressure area is needed, alright, above water in order for us to have a typhoon. Alright, so this is what a typical tropical depression is all about. Okay, uh, it looks like under satellite cameras. Okay, so as you can see, there are a bunch, uh, bunch of clouds all right, coming together on that low pressure area and they are just forming and as you can see here in this particular or in this picture that we have right here, the clouds are moving on its uh, signature spin. Okay, so because of this uh, wind system, they be able to, or, or these clouds are just starting to spin. And this is the birth of your uh, hurricane, typhoon, or cyclone, all right, whatever it is. Okay, so once the clouds, all right, once these thunder clouds or thunderstorm clouds uh, gather together in one place where there is a low pressure area, a tropical depression might likely to. Uh, to be formed on that particular area then with the action of the wind system this tropical depression will move from point A to point B and it will wreak havoc or it can wreak destruction on the place that it will pass through alright so typically tropical depression looks like this so it doesn't look like a typhoon alright so but uh, it will be it will become a typhoon in the long run all right, next one. All right, in the Philippines, we have a typical, uh, typical typhoon pad. So it looks like this. So it looks like a, uh, a scribbled coloring book of a uh, kindergarten. All right, so the typhoon pad, the, 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 the typhoon pad that we have right here are very, uh, all right, so very similar to each other. They have uh, all, all of them have a curved uh, pad. Alright, so they curve uh, somewhere right here, they curve over there, alright, some travel at the bottom, and then so on and then so forth. Alright, so what is noticeable here that all typhoons starts at this area. Alright, so what is on this area, alright? Probably, uh, that area contains a low pressure area, alright? It contains a low pressure area cell, and this cell... Uh, tends to form a typhoon on that area or tropical depression first or thunderstorm first before tropical depression and what happens here is uh, this tropical depression will likely to gain its energy as time passes by so it travels from this area down to the west all right so this is this is a typical pathway of typhoon in the philippines all right in other countries it is also the same all right, uh, typhoons or hurricanes have also the same path uh, that we have in the Philippines and also with the cyclone. All right, and this always going to the west and it originates to a part of the ocean when there is where there is a low pressure area. All right, so in a more detail, all right, so this is a general, uh, all right, it is in a general look like this one. All right, so it looks like uh, you cannot um, identify what typhoon passes on certain path but if we look at it in detail it looks like this all right so as you can see it is a curved path all right all cyclones typhoons and hurricanes uh, have a signature curved path all right regardless where the curve uh, goes all right it has uh, a signature curved path so later we will I will discuss how, how is that possible all right Okay, another curved path for a typhoon that we have right here. So as you can see, uh, the typhoon travel and in, it originates on the Pacific Ocean. All right. And then it ends up here in mainland China. All right. Where it uh, weakens and dies. All right. So again, it travels on a curved path. And also, uh, this one, it starts from the Pacific Ocean and it travels on a somehow curved path. All right near a uh, perfect line, uh, near a uh, straight line that we have right here all right so as you can see it is in a curved path as well but uh it's in the 
middle uh, region of the Philippines, alright? Next one, uh, another typhoon path that we have right here. It looks like uh, it is a curb, alright? It is a curb uh, elevated upward, alright? So, it is not a perfect curb just like what you have seen a while ago, but it looks like a curb. Alright, it looks like a curb and not that uh, uh, not a straight line, I think. Yeah, so alright, so all of the typhoon uh, that passes through the Philippines, that visits the Philippines every year, has this signature curve path. So, why is that so? Alright, so right, aside from having a curve path, they also start in Pacific Ocean. Alright, they all start there. Okay. So, as you can see here, there are no typhoon that starts on land. Alright? So, there's no typhoon that starts on land. But they end on land. Alright? So, but they end on land. Alright? So, aside from that, they have this curve path. Alright? And they have this pattern of movements. Alright? They have this pattern of movements which are very similar even though this typhoon occurs at different years. Alright? At different years that we have. Okay, so what makes it uh, like that? Alright, so we will have, we will discover that one later. Alright, so in the Philippines, we use the category or uh, we use the classification of tropical cyclones. In US, they use categories. Alright, so uh, if uh, if a hurricane is uh, has high has the highest intensity, alright, so it is category five. In the Philippines, we call it super typhoon. Alright, if the typhoon reaches around two hundred and twenty kilometers per hour and above, alright, so it starts first with tropical depression, and if that tropical depression gains energy as time passes by, it becomes a tropical storm. And it continues to become subtra a severe tropical storm, a typhoon, and even a super typhoon if you are, uh, if you are lucky enough. All right. So, what is the difference between this uh, classification? The difference between this classification is the wind speed of each uh, categories, alright? So, wind, wind speed. Alright, uh, a tropical storm is different from a severe tropical storm due to its wind speed, alright? You cannot categorize, alright? You cannot categorize a weather disturbance that has this wind speed under tropical storm, alright? So, that's how a meteorologist uh, organizing this uh, typhoon so that the public will, will know uh, and prepare all right what kind of typhoon or what kind of weather disturbance they will uh, go to encounter all right so that's the this is the classification okay all right so what is inside the tropical cyclone or trap uh, a typhoon or a hurricane so what is inside that okay so basically there are three things that we can find well, we have the eye wall the eye and the rain bands all right, so the rain bands are the clouds here on the side, all right, so the outer portion. This is the outer portion of the typhoon, and the eye is at the middle, all right? So the eye wall is the, from the word itself, eye wall, it is the, all right, at the side of the eye, all right? So it contains a lot of clouds, and it has the highest wind speed, all right, in the typhoon. All right, so in the areas of this typhoon, the highest wind speed is recorded at the eye wall. The lowest wind speed is at the uh, outer portion. All right, at the at outer portion of this uh, typhoon structure that we have right here. All right, and uh, the typhoon has its signature move, the spinning move that you have right there. Okay, so basically a typhoon is a donut shape uh, object. All right, it is made up of clouds. All right, and it has a hole at the middle, all right? So it can be a hundred miles in diameter or nine miles high, all right? So it can be low, all right? So it depends, all right? It depends. And the eye itself can be a 20 miles wide, all right? It depends what, uh, how, uh, how, uh, that it depends upon the intensity of the typhoon, all right? That makes up this eye diameter, or the, the, the diameter of the eye that we have right here. Usually, the eye is the calm re calmest region of the typhoon, all right? So, there is no rain, there is no wind, 
Alright, so sometimes there's a sun at the middle. Alright, you can see the sunlight at the middle. Alright, alright, next. We have uh, at the eye, the warm air rises on its side. Alright, which is called the eye wall. Because of, its, uh, because of the low pressure, the warm air rises on its side. And on the eye itself, there is a cold air. And this cold air is sinking at the middle. Alright, so if you know uh, if you know the idea of convection, in the convection, the fluid with warmer temperature will go up, and the fluid will uh, the fluid that has colder temperature, alright, will go down. Alright, so that's the that's the thing that's the thing here because uh, a fluid with warmer temperature tends to have a lower density, so it is buoyant, right? It floats, right? Now, if the fluid has a cold uh, or low temperature, uh, it has a greater density, then it sinks. Alright, so that's the difference. So, in the eye, the air there is cold, so that is why there's no rain or even clouds at the middle. At the middle, uh, the, where the eye is located. Alright, so the warm air exits at the top. So, as you can see here, as you can see in this uh, picture here, all the things that you see here are all the warm air that exits on the top of this uh, typhoon. Alright? And it's, uh, as it exits, it spirals out. Alright? It spirals out due to the Coriolis effect. Alright? Due to the Earth's rotation. Alright? Which is known as the Coriolis effect. Alright? So... Okay, in terms of how they how the typhoon spin, uh, if you are living in the northern hemisphere, it uh, it spins counterclockwise. All right, so that is uh, all right. So that will look like this. All right, so counterclockwise. Now, if you are living on Australia, which is located on the southern hemisphere of the Earth, uh, they spin uh, clockwise. All right, all cyclones there spin clockwise. So it depends, all right? It depends uh, where you are living. So why is that so? Because the Earth is rotating on its axis, it affects, all right? It affects all object that spins in the atmosphere or that moves in the atmosphere, all right? So not only the Coriolis effect, but also the wind system, all right? So, but also the wind system, okay? is uh, somehow responsible on how this uh, typhoon speeds. All right, so somehow uh, the typhoon moves by the, by, with the cause of the trade winds. All right, so later we'll show you a picture what is a trade wind all about. And that's the reason why typhoons move from, uh, from its origin to the west. All right, so it, at, it, in Atlantic, it moves up coast from Caribbean and in the Pacific it moves west or northwest of the Pacific Ocean to the countries located in that direction all right so and that is because of these trade winds all right now what makes it uh, travel in the curved pathway it's because of Coriolis effect all right so without this Coriolis effect probably all typhoons are traveling in a straight perfectly straight line all right so that is the typhoon structure all right, so okay, as we all know that the typhoon uh, develops in the Pacific Ocean, why is that so? Because on the Pacific Ocean, especially the one that is facing the, or that, the one that is located on the equator, it is uh, regularly, uh, it is regularly bombarded by high energy sun rays, all right, that comes from the sun. And this energy is used to make water evaporate. All right. So when the water evaporates, they become gas. All right. And they become gas when they reach a certain altitude. As we all know, as the altitude increases, the temperature drops. So what happens to this uh, water vapor? They condense, they become clouds or they become clouds in the long run that contains uh, rainwater inside. All right, so this is the this is the only part of the Earth, the equator, which receives a lot of sunlight. Unlike on the North Pole and the South Pole, in which the sunlight is scattered because of the Earth's curvature. All right, the sunlight is scattered. This one is directly heated by uh, sunlight in uh, one area, concentrated in short. All right, so. Okay, so typhoons are also affected by this uh, area called intertropical convergence zone. 
Alright, so in this intertropical convergence zone, once you are located at the middle, right, once you are located here, Right, so once you are located here at the middle, you will experience a uh, wet weather, all right, a wet climate. Uh, just to have that one, clarify that one, wet climate. And if you are living at the bottom, all right, if you are living here, all right, at the bottom of the intertropical convergence zone, uh, you will experience uh, dry weather or dry climate, all right. So this intertropical convergence zone moves up or moves down depending on the season because the earth is revolving or around the sun right it is revolving around the sun that is why uh, this intertropical convergence zone changes time to time all right every month okay next one uh, what do we have right here this these are the trade winds that I'm talking about so there are southeast trade winds and there are northeast trade winds so as you can see all trade winds goes to the west all right, all trade winds goes to the west. So that's the reason why all typhoons, hurricanes, and cyclones always go to the west. All right, because of these uh, trade winds that you have right here. And also, because of these trade winds, it gives uh, the clouds a starting or uh, it gives the cloud its sustaining speed. All right, or sustaining winds. All right, so and these sustaining winds is very important for a typhoon to have its uh, signature spinning move. Okay, so that's the intertropical convergence zone. Alright, next one. Alright, so the Coriolis effect. So as you can see, as the Earth revolves around, uh, rotates around its axis, rather, as it rotates around its axis, uh, it affects all the air molecules that are present in the atmosphere. Alright, so the air molecules will follow the movement of the Earth. So what happens here is, it on the Northern Hemisphere, it moves... Uh, Okay, the air moves this way, alright, in the northern hemisphere, and then on the southern hemisphere, it moves this way, alright, so these trade winds, alright, these trade winds move on this direction. So, how is this uh, have greater effect on the movement of the typhoon? Yes, it has a greater effect because it uh, it makes the typhoon move from, west, uh, from the point of origin down to the west. So, as you can see here, they are all going west at some point. All right. So because of this Coriolis effect, all right, and also the signature spin. All right. So the spin of the hurricane is different from southern and northern hemisphere. All right. Okay. So what does it take to make a uh, what is needed in order to make a hurricane? All right. So what is needed? So there are five things. Number one is warm ocean. All right. Warm ocean water located at the none other than equator. Alright, so take note of that one. There is no typhoon that is formed on polar waters. Okay, so there is no typhoon there. Alright, so you need warm water. Uh, 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius is the minimum temperature needed in order for your water to evaporate. Alright, now when they do, alright, so when they do, the winds that come from the, uh, these winds, Alright, so these winds that you have right here, these winds that you have here are called the trade winds. So the trade winds uh, that carries moisture from some parts of the globe, alright? They carry moisture and they are mixed with this uh, water vapor, alright? They, mix, they are mixed with this water vapor and it creates a column of air that forces this water vapor to move upward, alright? Since water vapor are buoyant, so with the help of the wind, they are forced to move upward faster, right? So that is why this area is called low pressure area, okay? Low pressure area. So this area is called low pressure area because it has a lot of water vapor going up or a higher or greater evaporation and greater humidity is present on this area. All right. So it goes up. All right, and as it goes up, uh, the altitude there is uh, the altitude above makes the temperature drops. All right, so what happens to this water vapor? It becomes cloud. All right, it becomes a cloud. All right, so as it moves above, the wind itself is moving outward. All right, the wind itself is moving outward, allowing uh, the air below to rise uh, to give. 
enough space for the air below coming from this region to go up all right all right so that's the reason why this uh, the air above is moving outward so that is the signature move of your uh, that is one of the signature characteristics of a uh, typhoon all right the air above is moving outward all right so as we all know this is a warm air if this is a warm air eventually it will cool down all right it will cool down again and then it goes back okay so following the convection pattern all right so the second one is uh, the winds all right that is very important all right the fourth one is the humid air all right what very important one of the very important ingredient in making a typhoon is a humid air all right air that is dry is not uh, air that is dry will not allow you to make a typhoon all right so humid air is very important and light winds all right light winds all right coming from a trade wind system the one that you have right here is forcing this thunderstorm all right to move from one place to another to become a tropical depression and so on and then so forth all right so because this wind that you have right here because of the wind that you have right here it allows the typhoon to travel from one place to another all right so it steers basically the typhoon all right this wind system that you have right here that's number five all right so basically these are the things needed in order to make a uh, typhoon all right what is uh, what is very important here is the number one without warm or without warm or ocean without warm o ocean there will be no uh, typhoon hurricane or even cyclone that will be formed all right evaporation is needed here all right okay so this is the summary of that picture yeah so low pressure cells is very important the air is warmed by uh by the ocean all right because as the water vapor or as the water is heated it contains uh what they call the latent uh latent heat all right it contains a lot of heat on it and it will be released when they are condensed at the upper atmosphere all right so next one we have uh, as the water evaporates it rises and it spirals due to the uh, the earth's rotation on its axis and as it goes up it forms a column of warm air all right which will develop to become uh, the eye wall in the long run all right so it will develop into an eye wall all right as as time passes by all right so that warm air so that warm air is located here right so on this side that is the warm air okay so all right so what is the effects of bodies of water to typhoon all right so bodies of water has an effect on typhoon because that is the, their source of energy the bodies of water without this bodies of water especially warm bodies of water not cold all right this warm bodies of water allows them to gain energy all right to develop more and more sustaining winds all right as it do so all right as it do so it spirals and it gains its uh signature destructive uh destructive intensity all right so that is the effect of bodies of water so as long that there is a body of water all right that is warm and it contains a lot of moisture all right so the typhoon will uh, generally increase its uh, strength okay all right so since uh, the typhoon forms on the lower pre uh, lower area uh, lower pressure area yeah so the air on that area is rising faster than it's uh, is going down all right so as it warm all right the moist air cools above all right and then it's uh, it goes down all right before it goes down it condenses it forms cloud and uh, rains on it so generally we call it thunderstorm and this thunderstorm keeps strengthening all right and this thunderstorm keeps strengthening as long that is on the warm water all right so as long that it is placed on the warm water that thunderstorm will keep on strengthening and it becomes a tropical depression in the long run and it will become a typhoon in the long run all right so that's the typhoon now we are already forming a typhoon 
Okay, so I'm a typhoon. We have now a definite eye that you have right here. All right, so the eye of the typhoon tells uh, how it tells how the or what is the intensity of the typhoon. All right, a smaller eye means a uh, smaller eye. All right, means uh, a typhoon with higher intensity. All right, smaller eye. Okay. All right, so larger or uh, irregular eye, irregular shaped eye. All right, so irregular shaped eye, uh, which means uh, the typhoon is losing its intensity or it's uh, gener generally weakened. All right, so it is generally weakened. So that is the all right. That that is the differences between uh, a small eye and uh, irregularly shaped eye typhoon. All right. So the eye itself will tell you what intensity does the typhoon have in the long run. All right. So um, okay. So as you can see here, all right. So as you can see here, uh, as as warm air in Okay, so this red All right, so this red arrow that you have right here is a warm air that goes up and it doesn't go up, all right? It doesn't go up the usual way, the straight line, but in a spiraling manner. Right? It goes up into a spiraling motion. All right? That's because of the trade wind and the Coriolis effect. All right, as it do so, as it do so, it uh it spreads outward. And as it cools down, it moves downward. All right, so it's mo it moves downward. So as you can see here, whenever there is a warm air uh, that is rising, whenever there are warm air rising on the process, it becomes cloud. All right, as it reaches its altitude, it becomes cloud and it uh, sinks at the bottom. Then and continues again the process. All right. So as it sinks, all right, as it sinks, as you can see here, on the eye wall where the cold air sinks, there are no clouds, as well as on the rain band, right? As well as on the rain band. So as you can see here, there are no, all right? There are no clouds. They are, they are uh, blank, all right? So they are basically empty, all right? All the clouds are, uh, are all present on the part where the warm air rises, like the one that we have right here, this one, and also the eye wall, all right? So, Generally, that's uh, how the typhoon works. All right. So um, in the eye itself, the barometric pressure on the eye drops. All right. So this is the eye. And as you travel, all right. So as you travel from the eye outward, all right. So as you travel from the eye outward, as you can see, the barometric pressure increases. All right. So the pressure increases. So meaning to say, if we will go back on this picture, the eye itself has lower pressure, all right? And the uh, outer bands, the one that we have right here on this point, it has higher pressure, all right? So, okay, generally speaking, okay. So, and as the pressure increases, all right, the wind speed decreases, all right? So, generally, if you have a lower barometric pressure, you expect that the wind is increasing. The wind speed is increasing. Alright, so as you travel outward, the wind speed drops. Alright, so that is true. That is true because all the highest wind speed is recorded at the eye wall. Alright, uh, it, it, it is recorded at the eye wall. Alright, so basically it looks like this. So this is the eye. All right, so this is the rain bands that you have right here. This is the outer rain bands. Okay, so generally speaking, this is an infrared view. It contains a lot of heat on this region because the warm air here is rising. All right, and it scatters around, right? Okay, on that direction. Okay. Okay, so what are the effects of landforms and bodies of water to typhoon? So we answered already the bodies of water. It allows the typhoon to increase its strength as long that the body of water is warm and moist. All right. So 
Okay, when we talk about the landform, alright, so the landform is uh, somehow an enemy to this uh, weather disturbance. Why? Because generally, landform doesn't have any moisture at all. Alright, sometimes they are dry. Alright, sometimes the air here is cold. The air, the cold air here, or the air here, the air on this region or the land on, on the land is cold. So, typhoon doesn't need cold air. It requires uh, warm air for it to increase its strength and continues. Alright, especially if you have uh, a topogra topo uh, very usual topography, like we have a mountainous region, right? That is a very, uh, very uh, deadly to a typhoon, those mountainous region. Why? Because this mountainous region changes, alright, changes the air that passes through it. Alright? If the typhoon comes from this side, if the typhoon comes from this side, once it goes up on the mountain, generally, it loses its moisture. Alright? Once it lo loses its moisture, the typhoon is good as dead. Alright? It is weakened on the other side. So, it will be weakened as it goes here. Okay, so technically, mountainous regions are a good barrier to these uh, super typhoons, alright, if there is, alright, because it changes the, alright, it changes the amount of moisture present on that uh, typhoon, okay. So, um, before we go to this one, let's, uh, okay, let's watch this uh, short clip, alright, let's watch this short clip on what does, or how, when, when you reach the eye of the typhoon, what does it look like, alright, what does it feel, alright, what does, how can we describe, alright, the environment inside the eye of the typhoon, alright, so let's watch this one. Okay, so this is from a National Geographic channel, eh? Okay, so... Alright. Alright, so as this plane travels through the eye wall, so as it travels from outside, going to the inside of the typhoon, as you can see, it experiences higher, uh, higher wind speed. Alright, so these are... Okay, so this is a deadly mission to some meteorologists, these folks right here. And this is a deadly mission. Okay. So they experience all the intensity higher wind speed as they approach the eye wall. And not only the higher wind speed, also greater rainfall. Right? So the plane itself is experiencing that. And once they pass through the eye wall, after being tossed around by 120 mile an hour winds, the moment you break in the eye is just incredible. It's just so peaceful. All right. Hey, let's pause this. So this is the eye wall, right? So this is the eye wall here that we are uh, discussing a while ago. And this eye wall contains the warm air that is rising from the bottom. So the bottom is the low pressure area and where the plane is located, all right, as you can see here, there is sunlight, all right? So generally, uh, the eye wall itself or the eye itself is, uh, doesn't have clouds, all right? It is peaceful. As you can see, there are no winds, there are no rains. On the, the, the rains are only present on the eye wall, all right? The, they are mostly found in the eye wall. So when they go back again to the eye wall, they will experience that greater intensity wind and greater rainfall, all right? Okay, so when they reach this eye, so it is generally peaceful. All right, so this meteorologist study this uh, eye, all right, studies the eye wall to its uh, wind speed, wind direction, in order to predict where is this typhoon or hurricane going. Okay, and how does the typhoon strengthens, all right, or the hurricane strengthens in the long run? 
damage. Okay, so in order to prevent further damage on land, right? So they will give the information on land and they will allow the people to prepare on it. Alright. Mm -hmm. Okay, so generally that is how the eye, uh, in eye of the typhoon looks like. Alright, so here we go. Let's go back again to our... Okay. Alright, so we have here the... Okay, so we have here the... One of the most notable effects of... Um, of a typhoon which is called the storm surge all right basically without wind the the water is calm all right water is calm but if you okay if you have a greater wind speed and if you have greater wind speed okay it forces the water to increase its level suddenly all right suddenly Right, so when it increases, in, okay, when the water increases in level suddenly, it will affect the one that is living on the coastal area. All right, so the question is, how does it, uh, how is it possible? Because of the wind itself, the force of the wind enables the water to rise rapidly, and when they rise rapidly, uh, it travels, all right, it travels to the direction of the wind and it washes away everything that it passed through, all right, it passes on, all right, so it looks like this, all right, so if you have a greater wind speed on this area, so generally it will increase the water level suddenly and it will create flood on uh, the coastal area, all right. Now, if your coastline is shallow, the one that you have right here, but if your coastline is deep, the one that you have right here at the bottom, if your coastline is deep, uh, the effect of storm surge is very uh, minimal. Alright, so unlike the, uh, unlike the one that you have on the shallow water regions or shallow coastal area. Alright, so the coastal area also is uh, has an effect, alright, has an effect on the... The height of the storm surge all right so this is the tropical storm storm surge so if you are living on the coastal area please uh be aware on this uh effect of typhoon all right you just uh relocate yourself or evacuate yourself immediately before the typhoon hits the hits your area yeah because storm surge is definitely included there okay so that is a storm surge all right, so what is this Fujiwara effect? All right, Fujiwara effect was discovered by Dr. Sakuhei Fujiwara of Japan. And he described this as, um, he described this particular pattern or particular phenomenon in which the, stu the two storm, all right, tend to combine, all right, tend to combine and tend to swallow up another uh, storm, all right? So generally, generally speaking, it looks like this. Right. All right. So a storm is going, or a, a typhoon is going that way, and there is a low pressure area, or another storm here. So, for example, let's have a tropical storm here. All right, a tropical storm. All right. This particular, uh, this particular typhoon that you have right here is traveling that way. So when it, okay, when it encounters this low pressure area. Right? When it encounters this low pressure area, it can it will change it direct, uh, its direction. Alright? It is possible that this typhoon will change its direction and follow this low pressure area over here. Alright? It can have a uh, the typhoon can U-turn. Alright. Can U-turn. Or it can go back to again to a place where it passed uh it passed through. Alright? So this is the Fujiwara effect. So in which the two typhoon or the two weather disturbances interacting with each other and usually the larger typhoon is the one dominating the smaller one. Alright? And eventually when it dominates the smaller one, it will be part of the system of the typhoon and eventually they are just uh, from two typhoons that you have, you have just uh, one typhoon which is very, uh, which is intensified, alright, because of this effect that you have right here okay so that is the fujiwara effect so basically the typhoon uh what the typhoon does here it u-turns all right it u-turns when there is a low pressure area nearby or 
nearby that typhoon. Alright, so Fujiwara effect. Okay, so alright, so just to sum it up, uh, uh, I forgot to mention this one as the slide um, goes on. So the effects of your uh, the effects of the typhoon, alright, are the following. Number one is wind. Uh, alright, so the wind itself. So the wind speed. Alright. Generally, uh, one of the destructive uh, effects of your typhoon is the wind speed because it destroys everything, especially the roof of the houses, the trees, all right? even a uh, suspended bridge, something like that. And it causes storm surge. All right? So since we are talking about storm surge, that is one of the effects. Right? So storm surge. Next, number three, uh, we have rain. All right, there are some typhoons that has a lot of rain. All right? So... Okay, the Doppler radar is a technology that is used to detect whether the typhoon contains a lot of rainfall or not. And the fourth one, which is very rare here in the Philippines, uh, tornado. Alright, so water spouts or, alright, so water spouts, something like that, uh, that is formed, tornado that is formed above water. Alright, so, hey, most of the time they are usually uh, seen when there is a thunderstorm. Alright, so these are the four uh, notable effects of uh, Typhoon and one one thing that is important here, one thing that is more important here is as the global warming uh, as the global warming continues, alright, our oceans, alright, our o oceans tend to warm faster. Alright, when the ocean tends to warm faster than usual, expect that typhoons in the future will likely to be more intensified all right the typhoons will likely to be more intensified as the global warming continues so okay so let us prevent uh let us uh cut this global warming all right let us cut this global warming so because when we have typhoons that are highly intensified all those uh countries that lives near the water or that is located near the water okay will be uh affected by these things all right so that's how global warming affects the intensity of your typhoons. And global warming is real. All right? So global warming is real. Okay. So, hey, uh, does the Earth have... Okay. Is the Earth the only planet in the solar system that has typhoon, hurricane, or cyclone? All right. So maybe not. There are other planets, especially this uh, Jovian planet that we have right here, which is called the Jupiter. All right, so in the Jupiter, there's what they call the Great Red Spot. And this Great Red Spot is uh, a, a hurricane, all right? A large weather disturbance on Jupiter's atmosphere. And more or less, it, uh, it, uh, it is already there 4,000 of years ago, all right? So we don't know if other planets has this uh, kind of weather disturbance. But one thing is notable here in Jupiter is the Great Red Spot. All right. So with that, all right. So that ends up our uh, that ends up our science video lesson today. So let's go back to the game. So that ends up our science video lesson today. So if uh, this lesson, all right. If you did learn something on this lesson, just uh, hit the thumbs up. All right, down this video and if you have comments or if you have a suggestion all right uh, that you want me to create a video in the future or any lesson in science that you want me to create in the future just let me know in the comment section if you have questions just put just put it there as well all right so if you want to be notified with future videos like this one all right so like that what we have discussed uh earlier all right just hit the subscribe button and it's notification bell all right so it will help a lot okay so i believe that's it for this video so let's see each other on the next uh science video lesson that we that i will go into have so okay take care guys and stay safe okay stay safe and peace out